Phoenix Events. Hey guys, how you doing? Um, as it says in the in the verbiage on this, this is a public service announcement. I'm going to be posting this on the main page, but it's basically aimed at the uh, health and awareness page because these questions get asked a lot. I get these questions asked in emails over the years, messages, even in comments on the pages. So while I'm not a scientist, um, obviously no PhD here, no college education, um, I do have um, you know basic practical application knowledge that I like to you know go off of. So what I want to talk to you guys about is um, summertime outdoor backyard pests. And I'm gonna run down the list real quick. We're gonna start with birds of prey. We're gonna move into fleas, ticks, and mosquitoes. And the things that you can do to try to, once again, keep the poisons out of the systems of your dog because so many people are having issues with, you know, again, you wanna be over-medicating your dogs with literally pesticides. Things that kill, things that are strong enough to kill microscopic animals or small animals, but aren't bad enough to kill your dog, but it just keeps them sickly. Um, and many of you can attest to this, that, that you know, just, Flea and tick collars suck, flea and tick medications suck, shots suck, heartworm medication sucks, all this stuff sucks. So if you can do your best to prevent it to where you don't have to worry about it, you know, why not do that? So I just wanna give some common knowledge facts to everybody and give you a little bit of an example how we do it here uh, in a way to try to naturally prevent it as much as possible so that we can avoid it. And I have to be honest with you, I've had this house for 15 years. I've had the sanctuary for a little over two. And before that I had these great big Rottweilers roam in the yard without this fence uh, we had an invisible fence. I got three acres going all the way back to the tree line way back there. And in 15 years, not one flea and only one tick was ever found. So uh, that, that, that says a lot right there. So first and foremost, you know, you want to keep your lawns well manicured. You know, if you're one of those all natural people, they got to have your flower bushes and everything that go extensively where your whole front yard is like, like you know, woodland. Yeah, you're going to have a little bit of a problem. As you can see here, I mean, even though we, we don't get, we get mowed tomorrow, so it's a little long right now. You know, we keep our lawn mowed, you know, once a week on average. Another thing that I didn't do on purpose and inadvertently helps is clover. Clover in your yard is actually good for dogs. Um, it helps keep the height of the grass down and it's extremely resilient to dogs. Um, you know, she's meal here. prepping. Ah, meal prep time. Um, so clover is extremely resilient to dogs. If you look around, even though we had the problems of initially digging the yard, you know, when the, the construction guys left big holes in the yard, you don't see little burnt spots where everybody's pissed everywhere. Um, clover's so much more resilient that you can get away with it more. So we have a nice lush lawn. Um, you know, we just have a little bit of clover in it. So then, uh, second thing would be like, let's talk about birds of prey. Uh, how do you stop birds of prey? How do you keep them out? I've heard something about mirrors. I'm not a fan of that simply because mirrors mean breakable, means shards of glass. Um, I'm clumsy, not just for the bad luck aspect, but for the dogs that don't want to get hurt. So I'm not even sure how to use mirrors, but that's a no-go for us. Um, but let's think about like birds of prey. Man, <laughs> Mia. Um, even your bald eagle, your bald eagle weighs, oh gosh, let me, let me get this right. I want to say your bald eagle weighs between six and seven pounds with a six foot wingspan. It can basically grab up to about 13 pounds total, but you got to figure six to seven of that is his own body weight. So the most a bald eagle is going to be able to actually carry away would be six to seven pounds max which many of our dogs, um, you know, uh, eclipse that. But that doesn't stop a bird of prey. And, and you probably never heard too many stories of a, of a Chihuahua getting snatched up and never seen again. No, you've gotten stories of a Chihuahua that's gotten snatched up and dropped because the bird couldn't actually hold it. Doesn't mean they're not gonna start. So we have to prevent that from happening. The talons do more damage. And the talons do more damage, but they think they can get them away and they just realize they're too heavy and they have to drop them so they can't take them. But it does a, a ton of damage to the dog. So we've never had a bird attack out here, knock on wood, and we've taken several precautions to make sure that happens. First and foremost, the fence. We fenced in a smaller area in the backyard here. You know, birds of prey just don't drop straight down like a paratrooper and grab a dog and pick up. They actually swoop in to get them. So the fence line in itself prevents that from happening because they, they have to come in high and get out. Secondly, we put in these canopies everywhere and they do help with shade, but it makes it damn near impossible for a bird to navigate how to get in and get the dog in a split second and get it out. The strength of the pack in our case helps out too. You know, they don't know, even though they're small, there's a whole bunch of them. You've never seen a lion go after the, the um, head of the herd. They're looking for the, the weak, the, the sickly, the old, the young, the ones isolated from the pack, but we have nowhere where we're really isolated here. So that deters them as well. And then on top of that, um, We've done a couple other things. Owls um, are a great deterrent for them, so I don't know if it works or not, but we placed owls, little little uh, fake owls at the corners of the corners of the fence line. I don't know if you can see them or not. They're, it's hard through the canopies. Yeah. 
So we've got a couple owls sitting up there and their heads bobble and all that and they rotate around. So there's a deterrent. But here's the most important one. And out of 15 years of living here, guys, and kind of, you can just pan through them while I talk. Okay. Um, out of 15 years of living here, one thing I used to sit on the back porch and revel at was that every spring when the birds came back to nest, if any bird of prey, a turkey vulture, um, a raven, anything, a falcon, would even come near our, our, our lawn, we had a ton of little blue jays, sparrows, and other small birds in our neighbor's bushes and trees, as well as ours around here. And immediately, if a bird comes along that's a, that's a predator, you would have 20 to 30 little tiny birds attack them in a gang. And it was ridiculous watching these little birds take, chase this big bird out and take them down. So we've, we've, in, we've installed uh, birdhouses all the way around the outside of the fence. And I'm proud to say that this year, every single one of the birdhouses has, has birds nesting in it. Um, so we have a natural defense against these birds of prey. So while I'm always leery, I'm not too worried about it. So you guys first you know, can say, okay, well, Bobby, what do you do about birds of prey? I'm not terribly worried about it because these steps we've taken into effect. Now, speaking about the, the big problems, um, fleas, ticks, and mosquitoes. Mosquitoes are a problem, why? Because of heartworms. Um, so, how can we stop those naturally? Well, you keep your yard manicured, of course, and I'm not promoting my products, but certain um, herbs and extracts, and this has nothing to do with CBD, so I'm not promoting CBD here. Certain herbs and extracts, such as ginger, such as echinacea, such as um, garlic, these things, even in small quantities, actually make the dogs taste nasty to, like, let's say, a mosquito. A mosquito does not want, does not go after the flavor of a dog's body if it's if it's um, emitting odors of garlic and so forth. So there's a natural repellent right there. Uh, second, the second thing we're going to be doing, um, especially for the mosquitoes, is we're going to be putting planters around the fence. We're going to be uh, bolting them into the fence, and we're going to be uh, growing our own herbs. Uh, Herbs such as rosemary, thyme, basil, mint, spearmint. These things are all safe for the dogs, but at the same time, once again, they repel and, and um, make it an un unhappy environment for mosquitoes. All of this without any kind of pesticides whatsoever. Now, so here's the big thing also, and that, was, that goes for fleas and ticks too. They don't want to bite on a dog that has garlic in his system or ginger or anything strong or potent like that, pungent. If you happen to get a flea or a tick, Again, I'm not a scientist. I'm not a sales rep for this company. Um, but we all know that, what's the slogan for this? If you get, if, if you get fleas on your dog, um, you've heard that Dawn Dish Soap, Dawn takes fleas, or Dawn takes grease out of your way. And you've seen the, the video where you put, put a drop of Dawn in an oily sink and it just spreads everything away. Um, and it's also safe for like baby seals and baby ducks. So, uh, if you ever have a dog with fleas, even if it's recurring, like you go to a dog park, you get fleas, comes into your house, all you have to do, you don't need medicated shampoos and all this stuff. You don't need to go get a shot and all this. Simply go get yourself some Dawn dish soap, the blue kind, the original formula. Put the bird on it. And bathe, and bathe your dog for 10 minutes. Get it in like, you know, knee high water, lather it up for 10 minutes. The worst, Mia, nobody's here, baby. She gets them all going, I swear. Um, lather them up for 10 minutes. The worst side effect you're gonna see, as we all know, anybody that's used Dawn to, to wash anything off yourself, you get a little bit in your eyes, it mildly burns your eyes. So it's very, very, and for anybody who says, oh, I don't wanna use chemicals on my dog, but yet you're gonna use flea and tick medications in college, but you can't use dog uh, chemicals, come on now, get, get some sense. So here's just a little bit of um, layman's term knowledge on how this works. Uh, a flea, okay? Uh, we have endoskeletons, that means our skeletal structures inside our bodies, it's covered with muscle and that's what carries us around. All your insects in the world, they have what they call an exoskeleton, which means all the goo is on the inside and it's, it's covered by a hard shell and that's what actually supports their bodies. Um, fleas have a waxy based exoskeleton. So the moment, remember Dawn takes grease out of your way, which is all, including wax and so forth. So the way it works, and again, in layman's terms, you bathe your dog in, in, in Dawn, you let it lather up and the, the flea literally, its exoskeleton dissolves. And so first and foremost, it drowns because it's losing function of its body. And then eventually it liquefies it to the point where it's just, it just leaks out of itself, killing all the fleas. And it's an amazing deterrent for fleas. And I know this is um, remedial knowledge for a lot of you guys, but for those of you that don't know, I can save you hundreds of dollars. I can save you a lot of health on your dogs. I mean, you still may want to do your flea and ticks. I can't stop you from doing that. I'm just sick and tired of seeing, you know, all the health issues that are happening from it. You guys know me with vaccinations and all that. Eventually we want to do stuff where we're not, you know, having to rely on these, you know, pesticides more or less to, to take care of the dogs and I've had fleas come in here probably four or five times never in the yard always from intakes only 
And we've had some bad situations. Those of you who've been around long enough, you remember Angel, she was basically bald. Lucy too was basically bald and just, just riddled with fleas. And uh, one bath for each of them and the fleas were completely gone and we've never had so much as a single flea in this house since. So there, there's my basic knowledge. I hope that can ha help answer some of the questions that I'm seeing pop up in the group and in comments. How do we combat these little pests every, you know, and so forth? Well manicured lawn, uh, bathe the dawn with dish soap if they have, if they have fleas. Um, you know, if you don't use ours, be careful the amounts and the quantities you use, but you can use herbal supplements. And once those are in their systems, they're excreting that through their pores, which, you know, the, the, the mosquitoes and so forth don't like it. That prevents heartworms, etc. And of course, you know, with your birds of prey, you know, you can do a few things. We've, the stuff we've done here is kind of excessive, but, um, you know, put a couple fake owls up in your backyard or put some bird houses up for some small birds to nest and get Can't a community going. Fossil rock too. And that should help, huh? Fossil rock. Oh yeah, I'm sorry, there is also the fossil rock. Uh, yeah, and we, we do sell that too, but they sell it in bulk. Food grade fossil rock is what you want, not the stuff you put in your pools. The grains are much bigger. This is actually shards of uh, sand, which is shards of glass, um, fossilized from millions and millions of years ago. Uh, so basically it's just little little uh, shells from fossilized animals from way back in the day. And um, small enough, ingested in small amounts, it's incredible for doing the same thing. Boost immunity and deflects from any kind of animals wanting to get on them and bite into them. Likewise, as long as it's dry outside, you can spread it through your lawn and you should be able to kill your entire flea population in that lawn. Now, if you have rain happen, you have to reapply once the lawn is dry. So it may take you several applications. And if you have an area where you're adjacent to a lot of uh, overgrown brush and so forth, you may have to, a constant battle where it's just like once a month you go out and do this. But all these steps, and, and again, you can find fossil rock, diatomaceous earth is what it's called, at your tractor supply, you can find it on Amazon. Get the food grade, you can get a 25 pound or five pound bag, which is massive, I think for like 25 bucks. And you know, you can just spread it around the yard. That'll help out too. So I hope all these tips help you out. Um, I can speak from, you know, personal experience here. Uh, other than fleas coming in, we have not had one flea, one tick in 15 years before these guys ever showed up. Um, no issues with heartworms developing here whatsoever. We've had a couple cases come in that we've cured. And uh, same thing, I think, uh, Mosquitoes also promote uh, tapeworms and other types of worms too, don't they? I believe they do. Fleas. Fleas. That's the fleas if fleas they eat that. a flea. Fleas do that. So we want to keep all those guys off. So these are the steps that I take behind the scenes. Uh, they're very minor. They're very natural. I don't want to say holistic, but they're just common sense, natural things to deter this whole situation. And, um, you know, guys, it's been working so far. So if any of that knowledge helps you out, I hope it does. Thanks a lot.